What's up everyone? Aman Bindra, where are you? Aman Bindra. Let's go man. Let's go Aman Bindra. Aman Bindra I didn't want to risk this. Aman Bindra did not want to risk this. Pranav Kakkar did not want to risk this. So yeah, we are, we are joining from my my Instagram account. If this gets heated, it's all on me, man. If anyone's getting banned, it's me. Let's go. Oh, we've got a party, baby. Aman Bindra, where are you, buddy? Send me a request. Let's go. And get Pranav Kakkar also. Wake him up. Pranav Kakkar went running. Because Pranav Kakkar knows... Pranav Kakkar knows what happens when Pranav Kakkar and Aman Bindra... Uh, or rather, Aman the girl and Pranav Kakkar get together. Okay, we've got Aman Bindra's request. Let's add him. Bindra. Aman Bindra OP. Aman Bindra OP. Let's go, man. Aman Bindra is staying up. Aman, Aman Bindra is staying up. <laughs> What's up? What's up? How's it going, man? All good, all good. Look, up hey. to date, Aprana wanted to join, but then he has walked in the morning, so... Dude, it's, it's only 12.05, man, and by my standards, I'm only... I'm ahead of time. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible, man. Loud and clear. Great. All good. So, what's up? All good, bye. What's up with you? How's everything going? Good, man. I actually trained today for a change. Oh, I haven't been able to play as much football because of the stupid congestion which I have. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been training a little bit. Okay, okay. So let's start. Let's start with the topic in hand. I actually wanted to speak about veganism and vegetarian diets. I have been okay. reading about it from a while now. The last time you did a session on nutrition coach on why you turned vegan. So I kind of developed interest from that time. I have actually limited the amount of meat I eat. Not that I have turned a, a vegetarian or a vegan. But yeah, I yeah. like to do something about it. So nice. Yeah. So then, then you have all these people, right? Uh, that vegetarian uh, diet or a vegan diet kind of lack nutrients, and you compromise yeah. your health when you turn a vegan. So as far yeah. as I understanding, uh, it's not the vegan diet or a vegetarian diet. It's your understanding of the diet and how you do it. So this is what yeah. I realized. If you can touch yeah. on it, that would help. See, largely speaking, that is most certainly true, man. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of work published on vegan nutrition, uh, vegetarian nutrition. And one of the first things I start with is why should someone judge the efficacy of a diet without supplements when we do have access to supplements? Okay. And remember when we did that... Um, What's that guy's name? I forgot, man. Ustad, smart and fit yeah. breakdown. And we touched on this whole false dichotomy, uh, which we have. Okay, we look at food and supplements differently. We don't have to do that because our body kind of doesn't do that. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's important. See, um, it's clear that there are certain nutrients which are incredibly difficult to acquire uh, via whole foods in a vegan diet unless those foods are, are fortified or something of that sort. So when we have access to supplements, might as well supplement. But that's not the whole story. And um, I think as this uh, session progresses, we'll touch on, uh, I think the argument which you know I'm going to touch on. Right, right, right. I yeah. already know. So this is yeah. what I was thinking. I mean, the way you look at a diet, that supplement is something which is different, diet is something which is different. If this is the argument, so you, uh, let's say someone is a non-vegetarian with a vitamin D deficiency. So, yeah. usko tum vitamin D nahi dene wale ho ke, supplement. I mean, just exactly. because you think ki supplement ke bina ek diet pura nahi hota hai. Yeah, man. And you know, the biggest culprit of this line of reasoning is Lyle McDonald. He, as smart as that man is, okay, when it comes to veganism, he becomes absolutely brain dead. Okay. And uh, I've had this exchange with Lyle McDonald 
back and forth. He's blocked me, then unblocked me. And you know how Lyle is, right? It's all about profanities. If you think I unleash profanities, Lyle is next level, man. So yeah, uh, that's the problem that we've got authorities like Lyle and a lot of others, in, um, even um, the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Jose Antonio and Douglas Calman, these individuals are very reluctant to actually give their opinion on vegan diets and admit that, okay, uh, whatever deficiencies or insufficiencies you may come across, they can be fulfilled via supplementation. Yeah. I, I'll tell you one argument that I came across and it was kind of funny. So I was listening to one of the debates Dr. Avi was having a debate with a random guy from the Discord channel. So this guy was yeah. uh, a vegan for seven years, but he kind of realized that it's not working for him. He had certain issues and stuff, and he was talking about that. Usne ek argument raha, aur itna funny tha. Matlab us time pe this was the first time I saw Dr. Avi getting stuck, but then he's he's a smart guy. So this guy when talking about the vegan diet, he said, are you the same doctor, uh, the doctor who recommends all rice diet? Now, this guy is thinking, no, I am not that doctor. I, I, I feel this is a horrible idea. Uh, so this guy uh, said, no, you are the doctor. You are the same doctor who recommends rice diet. Recommend he said, no, I am not. Well, why? He said, if I look at a rice diet, you are not getting any nutrients out of it. It's lacking nutrients. Then, huh. then he said, what about vegan diet? You just said, uh, it's completely okay to supplement. So why can't someone supplement a rice diet? I mean, if you can eat just rice and you can supplement certain nutrients. Then he was stuck for a while. He's like, what? Then then he said uh, that there is a ethical reason for uh, turning vegan. Uh, on a rice diet, you don't have any reason to do a rice diet. For vegans, there is an ethical reason to it. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh... And we can touch on the limitations of supplements. Yeah. See, uh, Avi must have been, been left absolutely stumped. Okay. Uh, that's not some. Hey, by the way, um, just so people know, this we are talking about Dr. Avi Bitterman here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about Dr. Abby Phillips. A lot of people confuse <laughs> yeah. Avi and Dr. Abby. Okay. So uh, this is Dr. Avi Bitterman. And I highly recommend people to check out his uh, channel. Okay. He's a, he's a smart guy. Okay, and I have had a lot of arguments with him back in the day. He went from being a strong um, proponent of non-veganism mm -hmm. or non-vegetarianism. Uh, and now he's um, as vegan as they come, man. And him and Isaac from uh, Ask Yourself, and you should check out his channel as well, um, are absolutely dominating the game when it comes to the philosophical side, the ethical side of veganism. They've had debates with everyone, man. And uh, no one's even come close to... No one's come close to even giving them a competition so far. Um, even Sam Harris struggled. Um, Isaac asked Sam a great question at Sam's uh, seminar, I believe, at Isaac's University, if I'm not mistaken. That video is there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And Sam was stuck. He gave a terrible answer. Uh, Mike Israel's debate with Avi Bitterman went so bad for Mike, man. It, I mean, Avi, Avi could have been more brutal. But, uh, yeah. So, Avi is a smart guy. And back in the day, I used to debate. Um, I, I used to be on the vegan side. Avi used to be on the non-vegan side. And we, ha we used to have this back and forth. And uh, credit where credit is due, man. As a consequence of those conversations, he... He, he saw where I was coming from and he did become vegan. That is incredibly rare. Uh, we, that is incredibly rare, rare to see anywhere, man, that someone actually reflects on their arguments, realizes that there are holes in their arguments, and then actually makes a lifestyle change, a massive lifestyle change to uh, be logically consistent. That is awesome. Um, massive respect to Dr. Avi Bitterman for that. I remember you shared your experience uh, about the veganism, that why you turned ve uh, a vegan. So if you can touch yeah. on that, and also now now that I know that you're not a vegan anymore, I mean, you kind of consume eggs yeah. and stuff. So what yeah. made you uh, kind of change your diet when it comes to eating some eggs or maybe, I'm not sure if you eat meat. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, I don't have any chicken or red meat or or anything of that sort. I will sometimes con- consume um, bivalves like mussels, clams, oysters, and um, seafood. That too incredibly rarely. Um, and there are good reasons for that. It's because uh, and we can touch on that. Uh, the whole nervous system thing with regards to sea animals, um, our early ancestors. Um, they, they. It's it's well argued that they are not able to perceive pain, um, and they are not able to experience life the way we experience. So, given that understanding, I make that concession. But coming back to your question, why did I become vegan? Um, what I'll do is I'll upload the session which I did with Amreen Ma'am on um, my vegan journey. And we touched on a lot of things, which we'll probably touch on again in this session. But yeah, I go into incredible detail as to why I became vegan. It, uh, largely speaking, for ethical reasons, um, ethical reasons, and ethical reasons alone. And I just could not find a good enough reason to justify consuming meat the way I did in the amounts that I did. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm stuck now. If I don't have a good enough reason to do what I'm doing, um, and I wouldn't want, let's say, a pet or an animal I care about to ever um, to ever be hurt, then it doesn't make sense for me to pay someone else to slaughter an animal and then just consume it. So I've touched on this in incredible detail. Okay, I've touched on the whole ethical side. The common ethical arguments and the counter arguments for veganism. I did an entire radio show in Bangalore, mm-hmm. uh, about ten episodes, where I touched on many different arguments uh, for and against veganism, and why most of the arguments against veganism fail miserably. Um, so yeah, that's why I became vegan. Now, why did I reintroduce um, certain non-vegan foods in my diet? Um, it's largely to do with my IBS, okay? So from my dad's side of the family, um, we've been struggling with a, a bad tummy for for uh, uh, centuries, man. <laughs> it's just there. It's 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 been a part of his family. It's been a, uh, and I obviously got got uh, I got a pretty bad dose of it, and that's how I started exploring low FODMAP diets. If if you know what I generally do, I pretty much follow a very strict FODMAP free diet. It works fantastically for me. Uh, and I'm advocated, uh, advocated for most athletes I work with as well. That is something you can discuss um, on another day. But it's, it's an important discussion because um, our evidence-based industry kind of thinks of nutrition as, oh, flexible dieting, you know, if it fits your macros and micros, have whatever. It doesn't work that way. Nutrition is far more complicated than that. And uh, individual approaches, strategies, they have merit and they must be discussed and spoken about. So coming back to why I then became, um, why I started reintroducing uh, foods like eggs into my diet is because um, nothing else was kind of working for me. Um, I don't tolerate soy well. Uh, Most plant proteins on the market are terrible as far as the other stuff they add besides the protein, which makes life difficult for me. Um, and uh, yeah, most of the vegan foods out there, like lentils, green leafy vegetables, um, the different soy products like tofu, they, they just don't go down um, with me. So I used to rely heavily on certain plant proteins which I would have to import, by the way, because India did not have good ones back then, and they still don't have good ones right now, at least the ones which tol- which I am able to tolerate. Um, and then I came across Dr. Avi's argument, and he made an excellent case against strict veganism. And um, just like he realized uh, the logical error of his ways, I realized that I may be compromising my health 
by completely eliminating all non vegan foods which is why i reintroduced them now uh, coming to the nutrition side of the things when we talk about yeah. veganism or uh, even for vegetarians now people yeah. usually turn vegan not for ethical reason uh, now there are a lot of de- documentaries coming up on netflix that vegan diet somehow uh, has a advantage compared to other diets when when it comes yeah. to performance so a lot of yeah. people turn vegan and then they realize it's not doable for them so what yeah. exactly should be the approach when you are maybe approaching a, a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet what are the common deficiencies and how can a person address it um so firstly this is not up for debate mm-hmm. vegan diets are not superior to non vegan diets in any way shape or form okay if anything a well optimized non vegan diet will almost always be better than a vegan diet okay and i say this knowing what i know today i didn't know this 5 years ago and 5 years ago um i was the one arguing against the evidence based community i had debates with ross and taylor road for allen aragon and this was my whole case that we can optimize performance on a vegan diet um almost okay almost we can't we cannot maximize that optimization um so what are some common deficiencies and insufficiencies okay the usual suspects are vitamin d and b12 d is something which almost everyone is deficient in so everyone just has to supplement with with d uh vegans don't necessarily have to be deficient in d if they get uh, sufficient sun exposure but yeah everyone is deficient in d so d is d is your usual suspect b12 yes incredibly important to supplement with vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is not a joke okay just like vitamin d is not a joke um then uh, omega 3 fatty acids the literature on omega 3 fatty acids has been a roller coaster they were once considered incredibly important to the extent that people were downing like 20 pills of fish oil every day to and now you reach the point where they are like kind of important but they are still important they are essential fatty acids and if you're not getting enough um from your diet you must supplement um i give you the good algae oil supplement okay uh, flax seed oils flax seeds these they don't cut it because uh, they have omega 3s in the form of ala which must be converted to epa dha and that conversion is up regulated in vegans and vegetarians we see that okay vegans and vegetarians are more efficient at that conversion process but it's that efficiency is still about at most 5% okay which is still terrible so might as well supplement with algae oil um so yeah these are the usual suspects you can look at vitamin uh, the vitamin k is um ironically enough it's actually easier to acquire vitamin k via most vegan foods fermented soy foods have a nice vitamin k profile um and then there are some minerals which people consider which are considered deficient or insufficient in a vegan diet which actually aren't okay so i'm i'm talking calcium uh zinc magnesium iron um a well planned vegan diet can provide you a healthy dose of uh, these minerals as well having said that most people don't have well planned diets so they they may almost always have to supplement i i am not sure about this maybe you can touch on it i mean even when we talk about how most of the people eat non veg especially in india and people yeah. who are eating gym and they kind of assume that i'm getting just because i'm eating non veg i'm getting b12 but you actually if you are eating chicken breast all day and few eggs you are actually not getting b12 um not yeah, enough see. i mean not enough <laughs> um see what's what's the what is it 2.4 micrograms 1 microgram what's the rda for b12 okay see i i tell people these are these are these are things which as a nutrition student or a nutrition professional you don't have to remember off the top of your head because you can just pull out your phone and look it up okay uh by the way registered dietitians who are watching this will hate me right now because 
they in 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 college in university they are taught you must know the rdas of the top of your head like that i'm like for what man i can just print a chart keep it in my phone uh it's not very difficult man to um get a sufficient dose of b12 from meat okay um uh, now meat as a general term i think if you consume as less as 30 to 40 grams a day you can get that 2 micrograms of b12 in fact you can get uh, um uh, your recommended daily allowance for b12 by consuming uh fish mackerel fish is incredibly dense in b12 um clams are even more dense um so bivalves are pr- incredibly nutritious so you yeah if you just ensure that you're having a good dose of meat three to four times a week um it's incredibly rare that you'll develop a b12 deficiency the reason we see b12 deficiency to be quite common in our country is because most of us are vegetarians here mm-hmm. another another question i have i mean i was exposed to the argument that a well planned vegan diet given that you are also supplementing it is kind of better compared to any other diet i mean even if it's a well planned non veg diet and when when i was thinking about it i what i could figure out is that generally when people are eating a lot of non veg they 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 are not eating enough plant sources or they kind of miss on phytonutrients is is this something which some someone should consider eating a non veg diet see non vegetarians can obviously do better mm-hmm. it's as simple as that okay if non vegetarians are stuffing their face with meat and butter and cheese the entire day um and that's all they're doing and they aren't giving the plants um enough attention then yeah they're going to uh, they're going to come across problems okay red meat in copious amounts is not healthy Mm-hmm. okay in small amounts it can be healthy um but uh, a l- lot of people who are incredibly fond of meat and they're just stuffing their face with meat the entire day uh hello kani wo friends okay i don't care man how awesome your kani wo diet is and how awesome it makes you feel if you advocate a kani wo diet that is malpractice given the data which we have on what the potential that copious amounts of meat can do to your health here's another thing man people don't get it they they're like um saturated fat is not bad for you so consume as much saturated fat exactly. as you want no it doesn't work it doesn't work that way man do you guys even study the scientific literature saturated and, fat is terrible man and the only thing is you don't uh, they kind of come up with the argument that you don't have enough data i mean you don't have enough data that cigarette is harmful but then why do you avoid it why do you tell people to avoid it man see with cigarettes it's, it's it's great that you brought up smoking you know because when it comes to smoking because of um, ethical limitations we kind of can't really do uh, randomized control trials we can't yeah. be like oh yo uh, we take group a you <laughs> smoke 100 100 cigarettes and group b you smoke placebo cigarettes it doesn't work <laughs> that way we can't do that so we rely heavily on large scale observational data and that's why that data is relevant okay though all those people who say oh correlation is not equal causation that <laughs> stupid sound bite man stop it okay these are stupid sound bites and that just demonstrates that you do not know how to how to read data and i'm looking at you lane norton lane norton is the biggest culprit that guy pretends to to understand scientific research when he doesn't even know how to read a paper he doesn't understand the body of literature on any given subject forget veganism and his entire breakdown of the game changes was terrible that's an easy documentary to break down and he still blundered that <laughs> come coming back to coming back to what we are talking about okay the whole saturated fat thing okay yeah cool consume your saturated fat up to a point beyond that point there are problems okay consume your red meat up to a point beyond that point there are there are problems homocysteine baby it's a problem you can't you can't consume large doses of red meat and then acquire large doses of homocysteine and think that it's going to be good for you it's not good for you the data is clear as day and this is not akin to smoking aman bindra see with smoking we only have large scale observational data with red meat we have excellent studies man we've got randomized control trials reviews whatever it is you want we've got that on red meat and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt 
that red meat beyond a certain dose is bad for you that as a general statement is not incorrect it's not an it depends things it's not an it depends thing thing it's not uh, oh you need to be a little more nuanced no we are speaking generics here and we can make generic uh, generic claims and the body of evidence clearly demonstrates that if you stuff stuff your face with red meat the entire day you're going to be unhealthy i don't care who you are exactly now uh, i also remember the article you wrote on shredded by science uh, the six yeah. myths about vegan diet so one of yeah, the yeah. five now five five six <laughs> <and> nine <laughs> yeah so one of being uh, like this this is a common i would i would not <laughs> submit or i Excuse i'm not sure how to communicate it uh, that if someone is a vegetarian or a vegan they are missing on uh, the complete protein sources so you briefly touched on this particular point that you can mix and match uh, different protein sources and you can come up with a complete source ah. uh, if you can touch on that i mean how how can someone do that and uh, is it something that you are actually have to worry about um see generally speaking if you take most animal protein sources and then compare them to most plant protein sources you can be like ah the animal protein seems to be seems to do better okay but if you become specific and you start looking at specific plant protein sources there are some excellent plant proteins man which are out there both in the form of supplements and even in the form of food so um as a general statement i see where that whole line of reasoning comes from but you need to be you need to get into specifics because then it's like a lot of people who just make these generic claims they they kind of say oh there's no life for vegans and vegetarians but um, there is okay we've got excellent plant protein sources um and we can use them those to fulfill our protein requirements um and then obviously that whole um we can kind of combine to a more food sources like um we can take lentils and rice okay so it's like one one particular food is lacking in one particular amino acid but in the other food that in, in that other food that amino acid is actually uh, present in in high amounts and this uh, food which is which has an amino acid which is present in high amounts it's lacking in this this particular food you combine them to you get a pretty decent amino acid profile so that's why people say okay combine beans and grains um okay rajma chawal those are things which you can do uh, but uh, it's uh, it's also debatable whether in the context of one meal we actually require all the essential amino acids in the right amounts because uh, we have an amino acid pool okay there are amino acids freely flowing in our blood stream throughout um, the body can always tap into the amino acid pool and acquire an amino acid which it requires um it's so yeah if you are looking at really optimizing someone's um someone's meals it's generally a good idea to make sure that okay you meet that amino acid threshold for each essential amino acid great but if you if you fall a little short every once in a while it's not that big of a deal for most people right i mean overall if you are hitting your protein goals given that you are eating variety of the protein sources within your vegetarian or vegan diet this is not something you have to worry much about that is correct yeah and now i have another important question i i had this discussion with pranav when i also came across this from someone that vegan diet are being related to some cognitive issues and if i believe there is a some data on this too. i am not aware of it maybe you can tell yeah. me uh, if oh there is more more certain mm-hmm. oh there is more certainly data okay and uh, uh there are no see often what we find is we find data okay where does this data come from it comes from uh, large scale observational studies which kind of observe this trend but uh, we require more um more studying more experimentation direct experimentation we need more rcts to determine okay why is this actually happening so generally speaking we kind of see that vegans and vegetarians uh, for some reason are more susceptible to developing mental illness okay 
uh and that can be depression anxiety and other mental illnesses mild to severe uh that's the trend that doesn't mean that non vegetarians don't experience it but the general trend seems to indicate that vegans and vegetarians are more susceptible uh now why is that it's very important to um ask the question why are we looking at populations okay so let's say if we if we take a cohort which is incredibly stressed already susceptible to um mental illness in all likelihood we are looking at a population which does not really take the best care of their health mm-hmm. okay and in that case we may see okay non vegetarians also doing terribly vegans and vegetarians doing even more terribly because vegans and vegetarians have to be more careful it's a reality you can't get around that so and uh, if you just observe the vegan community i have a lot of friends who watch this and hate on me hate on me no problem man okay um the non vegans hate me the vegans can also hate me i don't care so uh they plan their vegan diets terribly okay some of them are on the raw or raw vegan diet some of them are fruitarian i'm like man that's just as terrible as um a carnivore diet so you're, you're jeopardizing your health you're setting a terrible example for what a vegan is capable of achieving don't do that okay if you want to represent veganism um uh, kind of make some effort and polish things up man a little bit so yeah so um i suspect it's largely because vegans and vegetarians who were studied who was uh, who demonstrated um mental illness in uh, these studies they probably had terrible dietary habits to begin with and they in all likelihood had deficiencies and insufficiencies there's a very common deficiency which most vegans don't think about creatine deficiency have a heard of the term creatine deficiency it's an important it's it's important it's it must be discussed um because we have we have data which shows that uh non vegans have more creatine than vegans do okay great cool we get that what is the consequence of this we also have data which shows that when vegans and vegetarians are actually provided creatine to overcome that deficiency or insufficiency their cognitive performance improves which indicates a legitimate deficiency so uh no but we just focus on the vitamins and minerals and i know oh, man you guys zoo nutrients are a thing creatine is a thing carnitine is a thing taurine is a thing so yeah uh and these are these are compounds which can be incredibly important for optimizing mental health um and if you're not if you're not consuming them you may run into problems it's a reality and now coming to the uh, this thing when we talk about supplementing with a uh, uh, supplements i mean when we supplement we can kind of get everything from a vegan diet uh yeah. when we talk i mean now most of the people would have a problem with the money part do you if we if we compare a non vegetarian diet with a vegan diet is a vegan diet a uh, kind of expensive compared to a non vegetarian diet can can a person actually afford it it depends on what we are looking at okay uh jitendra choksi made a terrible statement where he said that oh vegans are going to have to consume all these special foods like broccoli and kale and things like that i'm like no uh if, and for some reason he he used that in the context of a b12 deficiency man if you have a b12 deficiency you can get b12 for uh one rupee a day or less okay from the medical store so yeah that's not a that's not difficult to overcome in fact there are certain vitamins which are actually cheaper to acquire via supplementation than food both for vegans and non vegetarians that's another reality um but yeah we if we start looking at protein and given the current market trends eggs are incredibly cost effective so finding something which competes with egg protein if you're looking at whole foods yeah then you may have to invest a little more um so yeah i would say generally speaking given where the market is at currently a well planned vegan diet 
will be slightly more expensive than a well planned non vegan diet and uh, like you already mentioned on the nutrition side of things maybe are uh, consuming of uh, eggs and maybe other few things in small quantities is, will kind of help a vegan i mean and the definition of ve- veganism i believe uh, this is what i know now that the idea is not that you are completely eliminating things it's just that you are kind of controlling how much you eat minimizing the usage of uh, animal products veganism is a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is practicable and possible all forms of unnecessary animal exploitation as far as is possible and practicable which means tomorrow when i go to the store and i need to buy a wallet or a pair of shoes i'll buy a uh, fall leather wallets or fall leather shoes i don't need to buy a genuine leather okay so i i make make the best attempt to minimize animal suffering there are some things which i need to consume there is no way around it okay um but if i have an option i will always pick the vegan option so this is what people this is what people don't get okay they are like okay it's an all or nothing thing morality is not an all or nothing of fam man come on um so people are like oh i either i'll be completely vegan or i'll be completely non vegan no man you're just being completely stupid and it's that's why i don't participate in these discussions anymore um it, it after a point in time um you just realize that people are children uh, for the most part um but if you really want to get into this sort of a discussion uh, i think avi and isaac's discord is a perfect place to be i that's that's one sane place where you can actually discuss these things <laughs> i i have another question not related to the nutrition part of the things and so i mean uh, you will see some vegans they kind of place themselves on let's say there is a pyramid of uh, how, how do i communicate if ethics has a pyramid they would place themselves on top so what is yeah. your take on that if someone should uh, do that they should show themselves more ethical compared to others just because they are vegan man this is a whole group identity dynamic okay which is plaguing our society today people want to be part of a team okay oh i'm a feminist okay we are all feminists and we all believe we all support feminism together okay cool we get that okay nope i'm i'm not saying anything for or against feminism by the way just hear me out okay or you know i i'm on this team okay we want gender pronouns to be accepted or we want this to be accepted um and cool man there are legitimate social issues which need to be discussed laws need to change well the problem is a lot of people join these teams not because they wholeheartedly support the team because they want to be part of a team because they are not comfortable being themselves or having a brain of their own okay so let's join a group baby let's join a team and now now i'm part of something bigger than myself let's go baby um so yeah that's the uh, it's 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 terrible i i in my opinion that's one of the that's one of the one of the practices which is making our society incredibly stupid incredibly yes. stupid because now we have teams we got echo chambers and now those teams can make their own echo chambers they can disregard everything else and yeah we have em- if if you want love and attention today you have a team which will provide you love and attention for the person that you are so you can always join a team if you if you are an idiot you will find a group of idiots who align with your idiocracy okay if that's a word so yeah, it's it, it's a reality man welcome to the digital age <laughs> and uh, i have a more specific question so yeah i you turned vegan i guess when you were in uh, in your early 20s so when yeah. you were you were deciding something that i mean you you don't want to harm animals you kind of want to communicate it to everyone around that even yeah. you should not do it so yeah. what was your experience with that i some people uh, go to the extreme that i hate the people who eat meat i uh, oh, i'm not yeah. with people who eat meat i'm a vegan and i want to stay in a vegan community 
have you been through those phase yeah and i completely get that huh? by the way if you see something unethical happening mm-hmm. and you've been able to put two and two together and you've realized that man this is a logical and ethical blunder which i'm witnessing right now which it is by the way mm-hmm. which it is the way meat is consumed today the way animals are slaughtered today it's a logical and ethical blunder akin to what used to happen back in time when slavery was a norm okay back in the day uh, i want to say hi to jitendra choksi because jitendra choksi said in his stupid post which he later deleted okay on facebook that uh, almost all the presidents of the united states were non vegetarians and he was like oh they are so intelligent right if veganism was truly a worthy cause they would be um vegans the presidents of the united states are my intelligent united states president not not the indian prime minister but my usa president jitendra choksi is all about the usa that's why he gets mike is returns to philips here right um they 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 are not vegan so i am not vegan you idiot okay of as far as the presidents of the united states are concerned 12 presidents including george washington thomas jefferson owned slaves at some point in in their lives eight of whom who, who owned slaves when they were serving their presidency when they were presidents of the united states they owned slaves does that justify slavery my goodness gracious me man um so there's a there's a great quote by mark twain mark twain once said it is better to keep your mouth shut and let people think that you are a fool than open it and remove all doubt um and i see this over and over again people who are highly incompetent share their uninformed opinion about things which they have no understanding about i and they're committing what childish logical blunders and uh, yeah they, and it spreads you know human stupidity spreads because then it gets shared like wildfire on whatsapp so i i always say um homo sapiens are incredibly stupid okay humans aren't smart they are incredibly stupid okay um uh, i am too okay i am not saying that i i am um some divine messiah here i just try my best to be as l- less stupid as possible that's it <laughs> so to conclude the session uh, where are you with the ethical side now compared to where you started and the nutrition side see ethical side hands down um nothing has changed the ethical arguments for veganism are incredibly strong and i will continue i will strive um as far as is possible to minimize unnecessary animal harm and suffering whenever i have the option to make a more vegan friendly choice i will always make that okay as far as nutrition is concerned i think we should quickly touch on uh the argument because most people kind of don't get it, may not get it mm-hmm. so um the argument is as follows which was first shared with me by dr avi bitterman and he said that we can theoretically supplement with every potential nutrient which a vegan diet may be deficient or insufficient in if we actually knew every single nutrient which is present in meat or animal products um but in light of the fact that we are still discovering new deficiencies and insufficiencies we've over the last 100 years discovered compounds like creatine taurine carnitine which we know are incredibly important we may not be at a point in time where we have identified every single compound present in meat which is actually beneficial for us so he makes the case that then consuming low doses of meat or animal products makes sense so that you do not de- develop a deficiency or insufficiency um of a nutrient which you cannot supplement with because you just don't know about it 
um and my response to that was cool i get it but that still doesn't mean that we have to um slaughter animals high higher up on the sentient scale because there are animals which are clearly more sentient right they clearly have a more greater sense of the world around them they are able to experience a variety of different emotions joy fear um etc etc um spare those animals and animals which are slightly lower on the sentient scale who do not have well developed nervous systems think clams okay oysters mussels um certain uh fish um shellfish try and get your uh potentially beneficial compounds from them and uh, you can still claim to be vegan people will contest that but you have made your best attempt to minimize as much animal suffering as possible while optimizing your health um and that's that's great cool. i'll just scroll through the comments if we have any comments on the vegan thing or any other questions no you got a lot of comments man yeah my <laughs> goodness uh someone asked about the ketogenic diet um i mean it has a place i think aman uh, you kind of spoke about this in your stories today <laughs> and i agree with what you said it it has a place you can't just dismiss it and shrug it aside okay there are le- legitimate biochemical changes which happen when you um when you follow a ketogenic diet which may be relevant to to your goals so that's why i say okay we are in a point in time where our understanding of nutrition is nutrients great you've learned how to speak the language of the body the body cares about nutrients not the source of the nutrient but think a little more because individual foods have something unique to offer i spoke about blueberries and anthocyanins <laughs> what yesterday day before something um and different dietary approaches um which you can consider exploring intermittent fasting what kind of happens there what happens inside or within your biochemistry when you choose to follow something like intermittent fasting are those relevant to your goals same thing with ketogenic diets same things with same thing with something like carbohydrate backloading same thing with following a fodmap free or a low fodmap diet these are discussions that we need to have it's only then that we'll have a thorough understanding of nutrition but no lyle mcdonald said flexible dieting so flexible dieting for the winner now everyone's on the flexible dieting ship um that's that's not how it works we have a habit of putting everything into that thing calorie deficit matters fasting doesn't matter so this diet is bad you don't need any diet you just need a calorie deficit <laughs> you you see in those tables right yeah. which people make and share in the evidence based community like they it's so enlightening uh how does intermittent fasting work how does this work how does calorie that work? Deficit. calorie deficit calorie deficit calorie deficit calorie deficit man uh the best part is most of these guys don't even actually understand they don't even understand what a calorie re- deficit truly is you ask them what energy is then you'll see them scratching their heads and i believe these are the same people these people explore the vegan vegan diets and vegetarian diets now their understanding is a calorie deficit or maybe a calorie surplus or maintenance that's where you struggle that oh vegan diet is not working for me you don't know how to yeah. do a vegan diet <laughs> that's yeah, it's all about the mac- macros and micros baby oh but we forgot about the zoo nutrients and maybe the dietary cholesterol which i used to consume which actually helped me a little bit i'm not consuming any more of that i don't understand now i'm i'm a special snowflake and that's why vegan diets don't work for me yeah great uh so i have a question how much soya consumption is uh, okay mm man soy is something which i have been getting a lot of questions about and uh, this is worthy of its own separate discussion because first you have to ask the question soy from what soy from what soybeans when it comes to just so- soybeans i'm not a big fan of soybeans man um they possess way too much in the form of 
what the industry likes to call anti nutrients so think phytates oxalates um enzyme inhibitors um, saponins lectins uh phytoestrogens we can go down those that rabbit hole and actually discuss the merits and demerits of consuming soybeans i believe generally speaking soybeans have way too much in the way of negatives to actually be a great food source for most people having said that if you have something more processed like soy protein isolate that is awesome why because in the process of refinement a lot of these anti nutrients the concentration of these nutrients is greatly reduced and you're able to optimize the benefits and get rid of the demerits so yeah a fermented soy products like tempe um a great option but um, soy beans as they are typically found for most people not a great option and this is not not unique to just soy beans there are many um grains and legumes which uh, which are which have the potential to be problematic which is why again flexible dieting the way it's advocated is a problem you must look at individual food sources as well mm. now the question is doc will you eat a naturally dead chicken um no i won't but uh mm, in a pinch i if i have to yeah it's cool but it's just that over the years um emotionally it become very difficult for me to um consume the meat from a chicken which experience a natural that um i i i've been uh, a i have a lot of emotional tug of war man with the whole vegan movement so i would always uh, i you guys can poke fun of fun at me for saying this but i like to respect the animal i be like man rest in peace buddy let's leave you alone Uh, never seen a vegan like Aman Dugal, so unbiased man. Really appreciate. Uh, yeah, good. Keep appreciating. <laughs> then there is a comment. Uh, there are so many carnivores, uh, dieters living healthy. I believe it's about planning smartly. Is it right or not? No, you can't plan carnivore diet smartly, man. It is way too restrictive to plan that stupidity smartly. It's a reality. and people i'll tell you what happens okay this is what happens with extreme vegans also okay you take someone okay and this i know where these people are coming from usually they are these are people who uh suffer from autoimmune disease and they've been consuming supposedly healthy foods which aren't really healthy for them and all of a sudden they eliminate everything in the way of vegetables grains legumes yada 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 and they just start having organ meats and just meats yeah i get it you feel awesome now because those foods which you thought were healthy or not really healthy but that doesn't mean carnivore is the way to go because you are healthy or no but you have the potential to be even more healthy and if you don't make the necessary changes now um things will come to bite you in the ass later so yeah that's where the carnivores are at they are just the carnivores are much Even that guy, carnivore MD. What's his name? Paul uh, something. Someone sent me. I think it, it was this guy only. Someone sent me. Uh, this guy's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, I for, even MD. I don't remember. Uh, his I forgot his full name. Paul something. So this guy is all about carnivore diet. He has been to Joe Rogan a few times, but now yeah. he is adapting to. eating fruits and honey so people are making fun of him on <laughs> twitter <laughs> not a kind of i'm not sure. sure. <laughs> yeah because obviously man it happens you because i think he got his blood blood work done right he expected his blood work to be awesome and turns out uh, he got his blood work done before being becoming strictly carnivore and then after becoming strictly carnivore his blood work was terrible after becoming strictly carnivore and yeah he's feeling awesome okay just like people feel awesome and before they just become diabetic one fine day so it's it's uh, <laughs> yeah these are problems okay stop 
stop relying on feelings okay biochemistry is real appreciate biochemistry for what it is uh is it okay to be on a calorie deficit for a longer period of time yeah at least at least i would say that the the merits of a calorie deficit the way people kind of posit it in the evidence based community that oh if you create a large calorie deficit your hormones will go crashing and you will feel terrible uh no, no I, I, i guess you... the question is about being on a calorie deficit for a longer period of time not on a large deficit but but a longer period of time let's say someone being yeah. on a deficit for straight 7 8 months yeah well planned calorie caloric deficit uh, can be sustained for a long period of time no problem whatsoever how do you think people lose a ton of weight they do that by consistently dieting for yeah. years and and when i think about it it's now that people are introduced to diet breaks and stuff think about the bodybuilders dieting uh, when they, there was no information about the diet breaks and stuff people were dieting people and not a, not only uh, these people uh, bodybuilders think about the people who have lost a lot of weight some of them yeah. were dieting straight for years yeah um, and another thing okay this helps okay this is a nice logical exercise a calorie deficit we always always think of a calorie deficit over a 24 hour period it doesn't work that way okay we are it's like this okay you are you are like in a caloric surplus deficit so you eat you kind of create a surplus in your de- deficit when you when you're not eating and that's how this whole caloric deficit works in and yeah just because you ate a cheat meal on a sunday does not mean you broke your caloric deficit you're still heading downwards only Oh, okay <laughs> yeah so that logical problem exists okay in, in, because i get the person who's pro- asking this question in all likelihood is asking oh can i be in a calorie deficit without having a diet break or without mm-hmm. exploring a huge surplus on a particular day or in a particular meal um that does not determine whether you're in a caloric deficit or not you you may still be in a caloric deficit even if you have a little bump in the road you're still on that same journey and i will feel that sir it creates the lot of information on instagram and facebook kind of creates problem for people that oh if i'm not uh, taking a diet break i'm doing something wrong it's just like this thing deload thing. now that people are exposed to deloads or oh, if i'm not taking a deload i'm doing something wrong maybe you are taking Stable, a deload man <laughs> you just don't know that <laughs> <laughs> psychological conditioning man is terrible you create an expectation you will see the consequences of that expectation oh i need a deload oh i need a diet break no someone told you you need a deload someone told you you need a diet break and now you become a baby and you think you need that when you actually don't so it's it's terrible man periodization man we, yeah <laughs> i my goodness you know no one understands that like literally no one <laughs> another question uh, is creating uh, helpful creating supplement helpful yes let me just people are fighting about something in the comments uh ah uh, so uh, this i feel you should address uh he's talking about chicken liver and goat liver and uh liver organ meats being micronutrients dense is it true yeah it is true okay so organ meats are awesome great way for um non vegetarians to get micronutrition and more so yeah it's a reality now someone commented it's not a blunder it's a life cycle this this someone is talking about i remember this uh, when this uh, comment came uh, when you were talking about the logical blunder when it comes to veganism so uh, maybe he's trying to communicate that it's not a blunder it's a life cycle that you eat animals it's a life cycle the whole food chain argument yeah. my god my goodness gracious me man If, why you think you're on top of the food chain body so you can do as you please between you and me i'm on top of your food chain Huh? What if I what if I do as I please with you? Okay, come on, man. Um, the the food chain argument reminds me of the great chain of being. Have you heard of that? 
the great chain of being which put uh, whites above blacks and uh, things like that this is the little theory they conceptualized and no one really understood no one really understands what the food chain actually is but um, no one knows what that whole life cycle thing actually is but oh which a little sound bite it helps me it helps my cause let me just share it first kind of understand what that is okay uh, just because you're in a position to exert dominance does not make it ethic ethical for you to exert dominance now people are going to point the finger at me and they'll be like you do that all the time but it's different <laughs> man i'm not killing people here <laughs> yeah so and the great chain of being the, thing, the, mo- the most funny thing when we uh, talk about <laughs> vegan and non vegan and you bring this whole argument of ancestors our ancestors yeah. were eating uh, animals most of the time no i mean that's not the case they were eating whatever was available to survive yeah. it's not only animals maybe we were eating plants too of course uh, it it varied okay from region to region and man tomorrow if i if i'm stuck in a jungle and i have nothing to eat except an animal i i'm going to have to slaughter an animal man okay so yeah if it's a uh, okay i'm not going to say this next thing then people will flip <laughs> i was going to say if it's another human and me i'm like okay maybe i'll take a name <laughs> maybe i'll take a name i was like no let's not go down that that road <laughs> sorry um funny comments imagine a lion eating grass on a, a vegan diet Yeah. um a lion is an obligate carnivore okay um um or an obligate omnivore i think um yeah a lion is an obligate omnivore which means um there are certain animals which kind of ha- which kind of have to eat um eat uh, eat other animals to survive like uh, cats for example i believe they are obligate on carnivores because they have higher taurine requirements they can still supplement with taurine i believe a lot of um lot of vegans who raise kittens and cats today have been able to find a way around that but yeah we are not obligate carnivores which means we are not obliged to eat um animals um and the small dose of animals which we may require to eat we can kind of consume them from um shellfish bivalves um eggs look into those options uh specific specific nutrition we should be taking care in case of neurological problems man see now firstly make sure that your diet your diet is nutritionally adequate you don't have any um obvious deficiencies or insufficiencies okay um once you establish that start looking at zoonutrients and phytonutrients which may be relevant to you um and start just improving your overall life and beyond that if you have neuro- neurological conditions you have to go to a doctor man uh neurology is incredibly complicated there are neurologists in existence for a reason go to your doctor speak to him about it or oh, her unless before before someone comes at me for not saying her <laughs> blood supply in a vegan diet is it that blood supply in a vegan diet better compared to a non vegetarian diet i believe this was the something which they showed in uh, game changers uh, so oh nitrates know. right <laughs> so yeah if you consume if you consume a lot of dietary nitrates in the form of beets green leafy veggies yeah um you will improve blood flow vascularization these these are things which nitric oxide production these are things which happen but um in the same realm there are even there are um, nutrients which are present in um, non vegan foods taurine is a great example of something which can improve blood flow so yeah um it's a, it's not a it's not a great argument for veganism it's it's a benefit and you can get that same benefit from being a non vegan you can still be non vegan and consume um nitrate rich foods vegan foods so you were talking about soya being a problem i guess these comments came at that point that is soya we have two three comments on the same thing is soya chunks a problem uh, 
Suraj Khan is not that great man, which is why I was laughing when I was breaking down uh, this guy's stupid book, Lose Fat, Get Fit. Okay, so it's the most terrible nutrition plans ever. Okay, if you want an example of a terrible nutrition plan, please open that book. You'll find two, three of them. Nice makes makes for for a nice case study. <laughs> Yeah. Then we have a question: Which must-have supplements uh, should we consider in our vegan diet? I mean, we already we already discussed this, didn't we? Yeah. Go back B12, in time, buddy. Yeah. B twelve, vitamin D. Uh, yeah. No. Something. Please upload the video on Instagram. We will do that. Yeah. Uh, now people are arguing on something. Uh, creatine and its effect on lean body mass. Can you please touch on it? Um. Generally speaking, it has a positive effect on lean body mass. That's it, man. Go on that stupid website, examine. dot com. Type creatine. Someone uh, is saying debate with Rajveer Fitness series. I'm not sure. Man, see, I'll tell you something. Okay, <laughs> whoever asks me to debate someone, don't ask me. Ask the opposing party because I'm always ready for a debate. Okay, um, it's the opposing party which does not want to debate me. So don't ask me to debate someone. Ask that particular someone if they have the courage to debate me. So someone said uh, you spoke about uh, veganism and uh, for ethical reason. Uh, mm -hmm. When you are not cooling down and you are calling out people, that can put them in depression. Is that ethical? Um, I don't care. It's as simple as that. You know why? Because if me calling you out on social media has a potential to depress you or mess with your mental health. What am I calling out first? Yeah, I am calling out malpractice. Okay, I am calling out professionals who have no business calling themselves professionals, and these people have the potential to hurt you. So I am doing you all a service. Okay, I am doing you all a favor. So thank me and be grateful. Number one, number two, if someone is so fragile that me calling them out on social media has the potential to affect their mental health, get out of social media, man, and just stay at home and do fuck all. Do nothing, okay? Stop being so fucking fragile, man. That's that's why I touched on weakness. It's a it's a genuine problem. It's a genuine problem, man. I remember. I'll tell you this, okay? I'm gonna call out people. When this whole ISSN thing was happening, the only person who was standing up for Sohi and Amanda was me. Okay, and what what did I see from Sohi and Amanda? They are dropping me DMs, okay? All of them were in my DMs telling me, "Oh, Douglas said this, or they said this, this, that, this, that." Why are you in the D? Why are you in my DMs? Why can't you make comments? Oh no, because it hurt us too much, and now we are depressed because Douglas and Oze treated us badly. Okay, um, tough enough. Okay, men and women. Um, if this, if social media can heckle you, my goodness gracious me, man! Please don't step outside your house. Please do not. Okay, thank me for heckling you a little bit. You'll become stronger as a consequence if you survive. <laughs> what are your thoughts on argument? Oh, plants are also living things. Oh, uh, okay. Let's assume for a second that plants are also living things. Okay, and because plants are living things, we have to respect plants, and we should not eat plants because obviously plants and animals are just the same, right? We are all living things, and all living things are the same. Let's assume. <laughs> let's assume that is true. Um, so you are going to tell me that you love plants so much, and that's why you consume animals? Well, hello. What are you feeding those animals? You are feeding those animals plants from the time <laughs> they are born. Okay, from the time the animal is born, feed them plants, 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 plants. Oh, three sixty-five days are over. Time to slaughter your animal. And now I ate the animal, 
and why are that animal i eat many times more plants <laughs> than i would have if i just had plants alone so your your argument that um, plants are also living things if you truly care about plants uh, just eat plants don't eat animals because you end up killing more plants why animals than you would if you had just consumed the plant directly okay and plants and animals are not the same man um it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out okay there's a difference be- between biological life and sentient life okay so yeah just like i would not equate you whoever made that comment or whoever uses that line of reasoning just like i wouldn't equate that person to a worm even though they share the same cognitive ability i wouldn't do that right the same way i would not compare a cow to a, to a tree come on man come on <sighs> how to make digestion better in case someone is facing bloating issues um explore a low fodmap diet in fact i would encourage you to explore a fodmap free diet um that is what i would suggest you can look into first and then slowly reintroduce foods work with someone who knows um who understands the digestive system the digestive system is complicated it's pretty robust but it, it is complicated so work with someone who's familiar with um, helping you resolve your digestive problems um so and a lot of times bloating is not necessarily a consequence of the foods which we are exposed to a lot of times it can be stress psychological stress is a big player um and many other things so work with someone who who understands these things kachi gani mustard oil soya bean oil fish oil uh, should be considered for cooking can you please share your thoughts on this um olive oil man largely mustard and soy bean oils don't have a great profile i answered this some time ago um in fact in my last live session someone asked me what should they look for um in a good good cooking medium so it should be low uh, it should have a high smoking point should be low in polyunsaturated fatty acids it should be cholesterol free and it should be rich in antioxidants if the need be okay so there are certain cooking oils which come along with unsaturated fatty acids polyunsaturated fatty acids but if you add add antioxidants to neutralize free radical production you can still use that cooking oil and uh criteria number 3 cholesterol free that's incredibly important you know why because you cannot use ghee and butter as cooking mediums and everyone who's been doing that what are you guys doing i have no idea okay because ghee and butter or rather the cholesterol and ghee in ghee and butter that gets oxidized to oxysterols when exposed to high temperatures oxysterols are a problem man okay no oh, good for you so that's why vegetable oils came into existence hello and uh, uh, and vegetable oils are awesome olive oil has done brilliantly um in the scientific literature so you can't go wrong with something like olive oil and then uh, sunflower oil is kind of okay and then, as if then i guess you you also have a lot of information on how replacing saturated fats with mono and poly um, saturated kind of helps with your heart health and your cholesterol thing well yeah, as far as the evidence is concerned um, the only undisputed fatty acid okay if we want to if we want to broadly categorize uh, fatty acids as saturated mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated if we just want to do that then mono unsaturated fats win hands down because they've consistently done well in the scientific literature the reality though is there are um it's a little more complicated than that because within saturated fats we have many different uh, kinds and likewise within mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated fats as well so you have to expand that categorization look at each fatty acid on a case by case basis then examine fatty acid profiles which we are exposed to when it comes to different foods which we consume and then make the best decision for ourselves uh is it true that we shouldn't have uh animal liver more than twice a week because of too much vitamin a content in them um it's a it's a consideration most certainly 
So, yeah, if you are going to have organ meats, you can get um, a significant chunk of fat soluble vitamins. Yeah, you want to be, and that's not the only thing you want to be careful with, okay? Um, there are other things which you may stumble upon when it comes to organ meat. So, yeah, now um, I think for most people, organ meats once a week, more than enough. Uh, Harry sir posted that beef versus soya and said soya is better. Watch your call on this. Well, he must have said that to, to... He does that from time to time. I don't think he actually believes that. Uh, he actually he created a poll if, uh, and asked people to vote if uh, beef is better or soya is better. Then the, most of the people voted for beef. Then he had put, uh, uh, put up a post that no, soya is better not be beef. Man, I mean, if you compare a really good soy product with a terrible cut of beef, I see you, if I see that you can make that sort of an argument. And Harry is great with his marketing, so perhaps that is what he was trying to get at. Did he give a reason for why he thinks soy is better? I'd, I'd argue, generally speaking, you, you get a good cut of beef. Um, that, that, that cut of beef is pretty awesome. Um, and you, you basically have to compare a terrible cut of beef, beef to an excellent soy product to make that argument. Uh, so uh, I, you have confused a lot of people now. Everyone is worried if they should completely eliminate soya chunks or they can consume them in uh, some quantity. Oh, I'll take a leaf out of Harry's book and say, join my course. I'll help you out. <laughs> now I'm not answering anymore. Now you're worried, right? So now you have to pay me. <laughs> hey, see, I'll, I'll, yeah. cool man, listen. If you guys are having soy chunks, and there's some people who can kind of um, tolerate uh, these anti-nutrients, okay? There are, there are enzymes which, which break down um, phytic acid and things like that. And yeah, so... If you have a robust digestive system and it's kind of been working well for you, you are healthier, you're feeling awesome, and you don't really think there's a consequence of consuming soya chunks somewhat regularly in your diet, go ahead, man. More power to you. It's as simple as that. How should one distribute protein throughout the day while on a fat loss program? Um, distribute it well, okay? Mm -hmm. In about at least four, um, four doses, four boluses in the, in the day, spread out at least three to five hours apart. That tends to work well uh, when it comes to keeping the um, protein synthesis elevated, maintaining your hard-earned muscle mass. That's, that's an environment which you can create by spreading your protein out well. Uh, high carbohydrate diets during a fat loss phase versus moderate carbohydrate, which is better during uh, fat loss? Hmm. Um, see, during fat loss, it's almost inevitable that you're going to end, you're going to run out of uh, cutting protein and fat. So eventually carbs are going to have to take a hit. So, Generally speaking, yeah, but I'll tell you there are outliers, okay? Someone like me can do fantastically on a low-fat diet. Um, you keep my carbs up, you give me about 20 grams of fat a day, I will experience nothing in the way of consequences of consuming less in the way of fatty acids. Um, I do incredibly well with carbs, man. Um, it's the simple variety, whatever variety. And this is, this is where you can kind of look into, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, you can kind of assess an individual's um, carbohydrate tolerance and determine if they will do better on a more low carbohydrate approach or better on a more high carbohydrate approach. There, there is something to be said about individual differences here. Uh, any tips for a vegetarian who's going to start consuming eggs for the first time? Any digestion related, anything, any issues? Uh, most people tolerate eggs beautifully. There are some people who struggle. Um, 
we did this with abina mahajan um lately so he kind of uh, started his vegan journey mm-hmm. and uh, yeah he, he kind of knew that there are pros and cons to it and then eventually he decided okay to start reintroducing some eggs and fish and things like that so uh, we started off slowly because he was away from uh, these non vegan foods so yeah i kind of reintroduced them slowly test the waters a little bit and uh, then see where you're at and i guess this is the same for someone who goes on a low food map diet that you slowly introduce and you kind of figure out what's working for you right now and you track all the up and downs and then gradually build up on that that is true man but i'll tell you something if someone plans a low food map or food map free diet well it has a profound impact on how you feel physically and psychologically to the extent that you may never want to go back um i don't know why people don't talk about this much people want to talk about inflammation all the time blain likes talking about inflammation mm-hmm. when he has he doesn't have the first clue about what inflammation actually is which i find super cute by the way and um yeah these are these are genuine discussions which we need to have as an industry and we can't just shun these discussions or say that oh you're not part of our evidence based team so now you go to the paleo people or something of that okay. sort man come together and, and have a debate we, people have oversimplified everything and the way we look at nutrition is just calories in mm-hmm. and calories out and that is what matters ultimately what you eat doesn't matter but ultimately what the kind of food you're eating decides what happens to your mood what happens to everything in general when it comes to your health <laughs> it is yeah exactly and people who try and justify this okay this practice they they've been called out okay eric's been called out alan's been called out brad's been called out but they use this line of reasoning that oh as a general message it works better okay mm-hmm. people need to know what calorie def- uh, what calories are and macros and micros are so we want to simplify our message man come on you that is that is being dishonest you know why that's being dishonest because you don't do that for exercise you have the complete opposite approach to exercise when it comes to exercise you have your magical exercises okay you got oh this exercise you have to do this exercise okay these exercises are awesome you are always prescribing exercises okay why don't you just say okay that we need to expose the elbow flexors to force and now if you know if you truly understand what force the role is then you should be able to determine and you should be able to create your own recipe which is what exercise is at the end of the day it's a stupid recipe and that's it so um you can't have it both ways okay the evidence based industry is logically inconsistent they want to make an argument for their stupid nutritional practices uh, and stupid nutrition information but they go in the complete opposite direction when it comes to exercise so this is where our industry is it's hovering between a stupid understanding of nutrition and an even more stupid understanding of exercise and that's why i consistently say our industry is intellectually bankrupt and there is no one in our industry who is evidence based okay perhaps i'll tell you this okay credit to jeff patch where do okay he is perhaps one of the few people who's kind of attempted to polish things up and guess what happened to him he got shunned aside he got shunned aside as a hater people keep blocking him stu philips blocks him brad schoenfeld blocks him and that's what they're doing to me also they're going to call me a hater guess what man it's not going to affect me because uh my desire to win and make it is stronger than your desire to hate me so i will make it in spite of the hate the evidence based community can hate me and the bros can also hate me i don't care i'll make it anyway <laughs> then we have a question what are your views on high protein impact on heart health high protein um high impact protein diets on heart, heart heart health are they related um, is there something you need to worry about see it depends on how the protein is packaged okay if you consume a lot of protein from let's say 
foods which also have a lot in the way of saturated fat homocysteine carnitin etc etc then these compounds have the potential above a certain dose to start affecting your cardiovascular health so if you want to consume a high protein diet look in look at your sources carefully uh how to know one's genetic potential if we are a beginner man i don't typically answer questions like this but stop thinking about that honestly you are going to achieve nothing nothing practical or relevant or empowering is going to come out of having that discussion like what for example let's say i would tell you that your genetic potential sucks now what what are you going to do about that you might as well believe that you can do anything you want okay you aim aim for the stars you may land on the moon okay it sounds incredibly cringy but it's the truth so uh, it's it's a discussion which i feel for psychological reasons should just be abandoned someone actually dropped me a message few days back he shared his picture uh, whatever progress he made within a year and he actually made incredible progress and now this guy has a question what do you think uh, now will happen i mean what where do you think i will reach in next one year and i was not replying to it he's dropping me messages 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 and i told him look if i tell you that you, you are not going to make any progress or you are you are going to make a lot of progress i'm not sure how it's going to help you so i don't think i can answer how much progress you will make <laughs> you'll actually kind of limit yourself if i if you take my advice on this ah the only caveat is if you start blundering your health okay in the process see if you're doing things the right way i, I shouldn't say the right way but the healthy way great man continue chipping away man continue chipping away follow that hobby or that passion of yours give it your best shot but uh, don't get consumed by it don't let anything consume you man um you you know if you truly want to be flexible be learn to be flexible as far as endeavors are concerned in life okay um last year i had awesome three awesome gigs going on for me and they all went away because of covid and everything if i were like a little more flexible and i wasn't so attached to those three jobs which i was doing i probably be able to crawl out of that hole soon or i be like ah oh, cool there's some other opportunities i can look into that so yeah don't get consumed by bodybuilding or whatever enjoy it man have fun do the best you possibly can and but don't let that take away from other important responsibilities um which have the potential to add even more meaning to your life so and go go and go go hard chase your goals how, how do you actually determine your genetic potential till the time you have it put in consistent efforts over years ah, this is a not like this is a it's good you brought this up because i don't see you people putting in effort i do not see people putting in effort um their approach to training um their approach to volume you know then we have these maximum recoverable volume discussions which are just broke at their very foundation any other yada, yada yada um put in the work man put in the work not just when you're training put in the work optimize your nutrition optimize your lifestyle optimize everything which has the potential to be optimized and then then see yourself see yourself grow um i people do this very day say man um i play a lot i do a lot of cardio man i i play a lot of football and i've lost a lot of muscle since then but i still look pretty damn good compared to most people i still i'm able to maintain my muscle mass despite not getting anything in the way of exercise in a gym gym setting it's because i try my best man to maintain my health and maintain my muscle mass i also have a good time it's because i've look identified different areas which have the potential to improve my health physically and mentally you do all of that no i most most people who are working hard a are following terrible programs which have terrible exercises 
B, your diet plan suck. And this is, I can say this generally, generally because it's a universal reality. It, I, I see them all the time. Uh, now another we have actually a lot of questions. <laughs> Let's go, man. Yeah. High uric acid and how much protein is safe for someone? Is a uh, whey protein a good choice? Is it okay? Um. So see, a uh, whey whey is okay for um, hyperuricemia things situations like that. But uh, it's not protein which you have to be most concerned about. It's purine. Purine is the compound which you want to minimize uh, if you have uric acid um, issues, and there is more to the uric acid story than just protein. Yeah. Purine, uh, yeah, consult a doctor in this case. Uh, this one is a killer session, super informative. Uh, how do we find out whether a moderate or high carbohydrate uh, nutrition is meant for their body? Is there any test, blood work, or just observation? Observation is perhaps the most practical way to test this. There's also something to be said about genetic testing. Okay. A lot of people have shunned nutrigenomics aside. Man, I worked in a, in a nutrigenomics lab. Okay. I'm, let me tell you, the amount you can learn about yourself while just getting your DNA tested, Getting your genome sequenced, my God. Um, so yeah, I would say observation coupled with DNA testing um, is has the potential to inform you. Uh, yeah. How much protein should a beginner consume uh, as per the body weight? I'm, I'm not sure about the question. So the question is how much protein should a vegan consume? You just take any stupid formula, man, okay, and consume the higher end of that formula. So if it's 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kilogram, have 2.2. Should, should uh, someone with kidney stone uh, supplement with a protein powder? Oh, <coughs> excuse me. I still have that stupid congestion, man. Man, with kidney stones, no. The thing is, there are different types of kidney stones, firstly, driven by different factors. So you need to work with someone and you need to ask that particular someone this question, okay? Someone who actually understands kidney health well and try not to ask this question in an Instagram live session, no matter how... Um, no matter how intelligent the person in front of you appears to be, um, avoid asking that question. Kidney stones are more complicated than they appear to be. There are a wide variety of uh, kidney stones driven by a wide variety of factors. We need to look into this and uh, then determine if you can consume a protein powder because it's not. It's usually not just protein which comes along with protein powder. There are like at least dairy waste proteins come with calcium and other minerals as well, which have the potential to um, trigger some interference in this condition. So be careful. Is it really necessary to sleep for seven, eight hours for better gains? Oh, again, see, this is, you're asking, you're attaching a number to sleep, which I get, I understand. Um, I think it's high time the industry starts talking about what happens when we actually sleep. And truly understanding the, the biochemistry of sleep. It is a discussion which I wish more people had. Because if you have that sort of a discussion, you realize that sleep is more than just the number you find yourself with it in bed with your eyes closed. There's a lot more that's happening and you can kind of optimize that. And this is a genuine discussion because people want to do more today and they want to sleep less today. And there was a time when I did not get where they, these people are coming from. I'm like, man, just kind of sleep. No, but now I get it. People are ambitious. They don't want to sleep. I find myself hardly sleeping. Okay. 
so yeah um i hate saying this but uh, i these are stupid sound bites okay sleep quality is more important than sleep quantity it doesn't tell you anything but in the in this sort of a situation given that we have a q and a and we are not talking about sleep and excruciating detail start looking at sleep science focus on improving the quality of your sleep and uh, yeah forget about the number i i have a few questions on this so uh, i know someone i attended their uh, this session that he was doing this uh, workshop uh, webinars when the lockdown happened so this guy had a little different take on sleep so uh, he actually gave example of dwayne johnson and few more others he said that you kind of adapt to if you sleep less you kind of adapt to it so given that you are sleeping uh, regularly sleeping for let's say 4 5 hours you can make up for 7 8 hours but uh, the literature just does not demonstrate that we see consistently that people who sleep more uh do better than people who sleep less and people who sleep less do even better if they sleep more but that's the problem okay the literature is kind of biased towards numbers so this guy's claim is very easy to disprove it's it's just not true in fact that's malpractice okay saying something like that um without touching on sleep in more detail you can't just say stuff like that okay sleep is incredibly important so um i actually came uh i came through a post today someone shared their client reports how sleeping more yeah. actually increased their testosterone they they were at the lower end to begin with but then when sleep improved they kind of built up on that and now it's at the a peak so this guy was talking about how sleep impacts the testosterone levels in men yeah um there's something we said about that i have to give a shout, a shout out to amreen ma'am here okay credit where credit is due she actually helped me realize um the benefits of sleep um this was over a discussion we had a study discussion which we had and um, largely as a consequence of discussing this topic with her is i have improved my sleeping habits greatly and i feel so much better uh, how does gi of a food impact your fitness journey i mean i'm not sure about what exactly he means by the fitness journey his question is how, uh, does the yeah. gi matter um it can it has a potential to um affect how you're feeling in the short term which is why at least in the world of endurance i'll tell you something man uh if you are incredibly biased towards the the strength training evidence based community please explore the world of endurance because those people get get more things right okay it's a more refined evidence based community if like, if you can say that um and they they examine um, these details and they look into it and uh, exercise physiology is kind of already biased towards the endurance side anyway so if you study exercise physiology you'll know that okay um the glycemic index as problematic as it is when it was measured so how was it measured okay it was measured after a 24 hour fast uh, with the food consumed in isolation and yeah i get it we don't consume foods in isolation and after a 24 hour fast so you kind of then refined it to, to uh, and made it glycemic load i get that too uh and now it's like the glycemic index doesn't matter doesn't matter no, <laughs> no. it it has problems but that doesn't mean it doesn't matter my god man i'm like oh nice finally so this is how it starts okay i i open an evidence based article and i'm like nice someone's talking about details here and then it's like oh it doesn't matter i'm like man you started thinking and then you stop thinking because that's what you wanted to say all along right you have picked your destination that it doesn't matter now ghoom phir ke i want to prove that done yeah nothing matters man we live in a nihilistic world where nothing matters can you talk about the diet you mentioned he is talking about a low food map diet he said he never heard about it uh go on ibsdiets.org and uh, yeah you can look up what um food maps are and why they can be potentially problematic
does excess vitamin d tablets like thousand iu damage kidney if taken in a long run uh just let me check my battery dude one sec yeah yeah um yeah so vitamin d toxicity is is real and uh, it has a potential to affect a lot of a lot of organ systems but um it's incredibly rare oh man i recall coming across one case study or case report where people kind of blundered this okay um so the doctors who were responsible for administering vitamin d they ended up administering a lot of vitamin d far more than what the patients required which then uh made them develop vitamin d toxicity it happens a lot with clients as well so i when i prescribe vitamin d i i write it bold and i underline it and i'm like listen if you want to take 60 60000 iu once a week it's once a week body that take it once a week and it it regardless of saying that making it nice and bold and reiterating it on call i had people who've like uh, yeah man my vitamin d is almost over you told me to take 12 right i'm like yeah he's like 12 days have passed since i took it i'm like no man <laughs> oh body so cool now stop taking it so yeah that that sort of a thing does happen so, yeah just be careful right just consume as much vitamin d as you need and keep getting it tested simple i usually write per day and not weekly because this happened to me too that someone actually started consuming it daily and they informed me and i'm like no <laughs> yeah yeah that's where the per day thing actually works well you're right about that uh hi dog is whey protein harmful is it important in a vegetarian diet so he his question is a protein powder is harmful um a well formulated protein powder is almost never harmful okay mm, where we start seeing problems is when adulteration tends to happen and there's a lot of disturbance uh, among yeah it's better yeah yeah it's better so yeah we 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 run into problems is uh, when uh, the black market and adulteration tends to happen and uh, it's not just adulteration there are some companies which actually which actually try to procure the cheapest raw material possible so yeah there are bad batches of way i know i i know this because i've seen it in front of my own eyes uh yeah there are realities which is why reading the label is not the end of the story find a good good company man um these these things matter when we choose supplements i i uh, if you can touch on this i have a question i'm not completely clear about it but then i have a rough idea about it so uh, i i was exposed to this information that protein powders are kind of better compared to whole food uh, when we talk about uh, digestibility that protein powders you are um, kind of digesting 90 to 95% of them and yeah. uh, food sources you are digesting some 60 65 plant sources or a little more animal sources and uh, they they make up to your colon and then there are problems when they make up to your colon something on those lines and if it uh, if you're digesting all of those protein that that protein doesn't make make up to the colon and doesn't create problems so protein powder being better compared to yeah see i kind of get the gist of the argument mm-hmm. it does make sense because see we just talk spoke about soy right mm-hmm. and uh, if you see the literature um soy protein really struggles at um, improving um, or stimulating muscle protein synthesis in comparison to its animal protein counterparts as largely because there are these anti nutrients okay which we spoke about fight fight aids oxalates mm-hmm. lectins uh, enzyme inhibitors saponins things like these which are a reality okay and uh, if you try and acquire protein from there you may run into into problems in which case a protein powder is better but that's not la- that's not true across the board you can find a good food um a protein rich food which does not have those problems and then you can kind of rely on that okay like eggs cooked eggs have excellent digestibility um Uh, a fermented soy product nice fermented soy product 
may also have excellent digestibility so these are uh, foods which you can consider to wiggle your way around this problem someone said can you, can we schedule a q and a twice a week amandendra really enjoying it <laughs> oh man no please <laughs> Firstly, because. Are you going to course join? Karo na yar. Ask him. Yeah. Questions you. By the way, when when is your website coming? I'm actually looking forward to joining your course. And I was. Hey, that's awesome, man. Hey, uh, thanks for saying that. Um, so it's done. In fact, last night or rather today morning was a big milestone. Um, for me. Uh, so I woke up. I I've been delaying something okay for a long time. So it was brought to my attention. um thanks to some dear people some close people um that the way i was going about my university was a not sustainable and b it wouldn't be appreciated it's very simple aman see i want to teach forever okay i love teaching it's a passion project of mine and i want to use amandugal university as a medium to teach and teach forever mm. i love teaching i can teach for us i can uh but every one doesn't want to learn forever so if i keep something like a lifetime membership uh that's not what people want and you have to identify the demand and cater to it accordingly number one number two i have this bias against certifications okay it's a huge bias um and i was in um Amreen actually helped me identify that bias. She she said that listen, buddy, I get it. Okay, you have a bias against certifications. Um, make the certification industry better. Certifications are terrible, right? Just like we had the whole transformation challenge discussion. Transformation challenges are terrible. That doesn't mean that transformation challenges are terrible. So people who are conducting them, they are terrible. So you make the certification industry better because people want. certificates and kids are reaching out to me they are like sir acha aap dusro ko certificate mat do mere ko certificate de do mere resume mein aa jayega i'm like man okay you guys really want a certificate and you guys want um a course which starts and finishes fast if that's the demand then i need to cater to that demand because man see at the end of the day uh i'm incredibly motivated to teach but if i create something which is potentially 5 to 6 years worth of material and no one looks into that material then that's going to take a jab at my motivation to continue teaching so i took my syllabus and i completely broke it down identified some important essential concepts See, i want that syllabus to be comprehensive i want to teach everything nutrition exercise business acquiring information distilling information interpreting it uh psychology business making money doing doing your social media well yada 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 making an impact these are all things which need to be discussed but i realize that they need to be discussed in a short period of time okay so uh pretty soon i will uh come up with what the amandugal university is in a revised format and it makes a lot of sense now I'm I'm grateful to the people who helped me identify that. They are like, see, your work is good. Let it reach more people. Do not put this barrier unnecessarily. So it makes sense, and I took that feedback into consideration, which is why critical feedback is very important. When people disagree with you, it's awesome because you have the potential to learn something. so yeah um, as a consequence of having these discussions i have learned that i have to provide um, a service which people really want i am actually looking forward to it i am looking forward to joining it <laughs> hey thank you so much that's that's good to know uh, the real gm died dr strange to tony stark dialogue if i tell you it won't happen he is talking about that genetic potential thing <laughs> yeah Yeah. I have chosen pea protein. Is it okay? Whey was costly. Yeah, uh, whey versus pea. We've actually got comparisons. Uh, pea is done pretty well, man, compared to whey. 
In fact, there's one study where we actually did a little better in improving muscle thickness. Not statistically, not statistically significant, but still a little better. So pea, pea is good. Pea, pea protein is awesome. What are your thoughts on jumping rope? Um, it's just jumping rope. That's my thoughts on jumping rope. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Okay. Or you can um, snap your ankle or you may expose your, <laughs> your, or you may expose your uh, body to forces, which it isn't capable of handling. Then you'll develop plantar fasciitis, um, um, an ankle strains, maybe some shin splints. These are things which happen because you saw, who did you see? You saw Rocky jumping rope and all of a sudden you got your sedentary ass out of bed and you're like, cool, I'm going to jump rope. And then what happens? You find yourself incredibly sore, then you'll sit, sit down okay. again and you'll be and like, yeah, this exercise thing isn't starting, for me. Then it's about setting the targets that I'll jump 1,000 <laughs> ropes at once, 2,000 at once. <laughs> Great, man. Um, Rambo Circus, baby. I, and I love the Rambo Circus. But yeah, um, go for it. And uh, who knows, man, these, these are acts which will get you a lot of attention on social media. Go do that. Break a world record. More power to you. Do we have neutrogenic test centers in Pune? Uh, how much does it cost generally? I guess this person yeah, so, in Pune is asking you about the lab. Yeah, so um, I, uh, here you go. Here's my little newsletter. Um, resilient nutrigenomics. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an old one, but uh, this is the name of the company. It's called Gene Support. And listen, I'm not promoting these bloggers, okay? Um, just saying. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they can go fuck themselves. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a lab, uh, it's a company, Gene Support is, um, it's uh, near Balewadi Stadium in Pune. And man, I used to travel, what? Two hours every day. So an hour to go, an hour to come back. Um, and I'm very grateful, man, for what these people taught me. I didn't expect to learn as much, but uh, shout out goes to Dr. Amol Raut. If uh, uh, that guy is a genius, man, his understanding of chemistry is mind blowing. Um, it truly is. The day Dr. Amol Raut speaks about nutrition or the chemistry of food is the day you will forget all your Gora evidence-based heroes. He is awesome. And uh, I'll tell you why he's awesome. Because I'm a smarty, right? So I went and someone asked a question. And when Amol Raut was lecturing, okay, um, a senior dietitian asked a question. And I jumped the gun. I answered her question. <laughs> she asked Amol. I'm like, ah, wait, I'll answer it. I answered it. And uh, I gave that it depends type of an answer where I'm like, I don't think you can really do that. That's a measurement which uh, in practice is pretty difficult to, um, difficult to accomplish. Amol pulls out his, um, his marker, wipes the whiteboard and he goes on to present a beautiful calculation, which I remember to this very day. And I'm like, man, I really need to learn this subject because this guy's good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why you, you should be around people who are far older than you, far more experienced than you. Uh, that guy does, doesn't lift weights, okay? Um, he, if you look at him, he's the, he's the last person you'd expect to know a thing or two about nutrition. But man, that guy's understanding of nutrition is on another dimension altogether. I'm grateful, man. I came across him five years ago. And today I know nutrition well enough because I, I had a teacher like Dr. Amol Raut. Um, fantastic individual. And I would have never learned nutrition the way I have learned today if it wasn't for him. So, yeah, I'm just fortunate to have excellent teachers, man, who have stumbled upon um, so yeah, that's important. Mm, which food increases uric acid levels if one is not consuming non-veg food? We kind of touched on this, right? Purine rich. Yeah, yeah, we did. 
hi i work out in the gym and i also do cardio in the evening with home cooked meals still it's hard to lose weight any suggestions um go uh, like kind of ask this question on nutrition coach man i'm sorry okay i'm i'm saying that right now because i'm actually losing battery yeah. um and uh, i am not sure if my power banks are sufficiently we, charged we have a lot of questions bhai maybe we should end it uh, agar aapka battery khatam ho raha hai yeah hai. yeah we can address so this later yeah we will do this again okay i i get it people have a lot of questions and uh, it's great uh, it's funny man they usually ask more questions when you're around yeah <laughs> I think I think most of those questions are addressed to you, man. They don't want me answering those questions. They're no, like, no, man, this guy. That's not the case. This, this guy, so this guy so answers so questions so too arrogantly. So <laughs> okay, cool, man. Great. Um, we'll do this again. Okay, yeah. right now. Um, oh, what time is it? Dude, it's two o'clock. I mean, did I miss Champions League? I think I did. So, I, I think I got half an hour. I'll catch Champions League, man. Right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hey, yeah, no problem. See, I didn't even know time kind of flew flew by. I thought we'd kind of do like a half an hour, forty minute thing, but this is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. great, Aman. Uh, yeah. Okay, bye. Thank any you so much. any other important? We I still have battery. Like it's I still have fifteen percent. I I. But any anything? I see one question of uh, which I feel you can address if you have the time. Your views on uh, why K level. claims that to make change in myostains level something and then the question is lost ah so i i i i get that man the whole myostatin discussion oh man see let me tell you something okay um k a lot of people have asked me about k11 recently and they think that k11 only gets access uh, nutrition wrong okay they make nutritional nu- nutrition blunders um they teach exercise incorrectly just as incorrectly it's mm-hmm. it's just that you haven't been able to identify the most people haven't been able to identify the mistakes which k11 makes k11 is malpractice city the way they teach exercise um will hurt you and that is a claim i will cont- uh, if you want to contest if you're a k11 faculty member or teacher and you teach exercise please uh hit me up we'll schedule a discussion i, I will I'm open your k11 training manual i said not k11 why k11 i'm not sure what is why k11 listen there is no why k11 it's why not k11 okay k11 and uh, if you think i have i am really sorry he is saying that it's a type of steroid man fuck that shit now i don't care okay <laughs> now your now your question is lost k11 <laughs> Now fuck it. We are going to end this with K11, okay? <laughs> K11 Fitness Academy and Kaisat Kapadia. What are you guys doing, okay? Man, you actually have the potential. You kind of made a name for yourself. Improve, improve your course and kind of when you when I say improve it, improve all of it because all of it sucks right now. And it's not just K11, right? People are picking on K11 right now. A lot of people are reaching out. K11 sucks. K11 sucks. I'm like, okay, tell me which course is awesome. Which one? Which is awesome? And honestly, the people the, calling out K11 also did some blunders calling them out. <laughs> I I saw a few real blunders. <laughs> yeah, man. I have I I I've seen these too. Okay, people kind of agreeing with K11 on the training side of things. I'm like, wait a second. That is just as problematic. <laughs> And you made you guys are making mistakes by while calling out someone else's mistakes. Which which course is awesome? Please tell me, okay? You think INFS is awesome? My God, that that's just as bad. Um, every course I have seen to this very day, the the contents of which have been shared with me, especially your evidence based courses, JPS Education, Mac Nutrition. Sorry, Luke Johnson, the Postal Trainer Collective did a great job as far as. Sales consultation is concerned, a little business is concerned, but man, you guys did a terrible job with exercise and nutrition, and that's a reality. Accept it and improve. So there are no good courses out there, and um, but uh, K11 has a special place, man. It is that one course which just gets 
everything wrong at <laughs> such a fundamental level and they also they have their stuff has the potential to hurt you so if you want to create a hierarchy of terrible courses k11 is right up there <laughs> i guess that's pretty much it uh, we can end the session and uh, we will do this again i actually enjoyed it a lot I, the reason i do live sessions with you is that i get to learn few stuff so i i always look forward to it <laughs> Hey thank you so much Aman um I appreciate that and uh, we'll do this again yeah sure man okay so uh, you will end the session uh, yeah i'll end the session yeah. now okay 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 good night good night good night everyone